Welcome. We've gathered today in the presence of God to witness the joining of Serena Haman and Thomas Boltheis in holy matrimony. God our Father, we praise you for making and redeeming us to live together in love. Thomas and Serena, we give you our blessing. May you always see the beauty in each other as in creation. May you always seek to understand each other through knowledge. May you always love one another as you are loved. And may you always know love always is always enough. Today we are witnesses not to the crude biological coupling of soulless animals for their mutual pleasure and the survival of our species, but rather the union of a male and a female that together mysteriously and profoundly reflect God's very image in a drama that stretches back to the dawn of our creation. And forward now from our generation to Thomas and Serena's, and hopefully soon to the next. <laughs> you are released by Maritza and me to God's unique calling on your life, to re reflect his image in your life together. And yes, it will be good. It is very good. Serena and Thomas, may you receive God's blessing as you hunger and thirst for righteousness, acting justly, loving mercy, and walking humbly with him. May the God of light lavish his peace on you. verses 1 to 5. Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. Continue to remember those in prison as if you were together with them in prison, and those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering. Marriage should be honored by all. 
Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. God created us male and female and gave us marriage so that husband and wife may help and comfort each other, living faithfully together in plenty and in want, in joy and in sorrow, in sickness and in health throughout all our days. God gave us marriage for the full expression of the love between a man and a woman. In marriage, a woman and a man belong to each other, and with affection and tenderness freely give themselves to one another. God gave us marriage for the well-being of human society, for the ordering of family life, and for the nurture of children. God gave us marriage as a holy mystery, which a man and a woman are joined together and become one, just as Christ is one with the church. In marriage, husband and wife are called to a new way of life, created, ordered, and blessed by God. And this way of life must not be entered into carelessly or from selfish motives, but responsibly and prayerfully. We rejoice that marriage is given by God, blessed by our Lord Jesus Christ, and sustained by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, let marriage be held in honor by all. But why is it to be honored? Marriage is honorable because, well, God honors it. But a second reason is this. The word that is translated honorable in this text can also be translated as precious, as valuable. And elsewhere in the Bible, we find this same word used in the context of other relationships. One word of advice to honor your own marriage. Pray for it. Thomas, you may be seated. Thomas, will you have Serena to be your wife, Serena to be your wife, and will you in the presence of God promise to love, support, and serve Serena, entering into a lasting covenant like that between Christ and his people? I will. And Serena, will you have Thomas to be your husband, and will you, in the presence of God, promise to love, support, and serve Thomas, entering into a lasting covenant like between that of Christ and his people? I will. Now, each of you have taken the time and the courage to write in your own words your vows to each other. And as you now declare them to each other, we who are blessed to hear your vows are holy witnesses to the promises you make and keep by the strength of God. Serena, I trust this marriage to be a blessing, and I will do everything I can to be a blessing to you. Through our expected trials and those that surprise us, I will learn with you, I will give thanks with you, and I will pray with you. In the joy we work for and the joy that surprises us, I will rejoice with you, give thanks with you, and I will pray with you. I promise that through all experiences, I will recognize our new family as a priority, leaving my father and my mother for you in our future. And through this, I will remember that we are not our own. I promise to challenge you in your faith, to hold you accountable in faith, and to build you up in your faith, for you are not your own. Serena, I promise that when you are lonely, I will be your friend. When you are sad, I will hold you and lift you up. I will laugh with you and I will cry with you. 
I will love you even when it's hard to do so, and as the seasons change, I will change with you, for I am not my own. I promise to be faithful to you, letting no interest of mine come between us and what is best for our marriage. I promise to learn to travel well, to adventure with you, and to take risks for you. Serena, <clears throat> I promise to love you in a way that you can understand, giving gifts when appropriate and my time when you need it. I will always do my best to love you how you ought to be loved. To each other, we will be the truest of companions and the best of friends. I, Thomas, take you, Serena, to be no other than yourself, loving what I know of you, trusting what I do not yet know, in all our years and through the best and worst to come. Thomas, just as all good and perfect gifts come from above, so too does the gift of our marriage. I thank God for you and for the blessing of our future together. In God's strength, I promise to seek first the kingdom and then to pledge my first earthly loyalty to our new family leaving my mother and father as we become one. No trial or dream shall take precedence over my commitment and love for you. With the help of the Father, I vow to treat you as an equal, as one who was also made in God's image. I vow to do my best to serve you, to think of your needs before my own, remembering the humility of Christ. Thomas, I promise to remind you of the glorious potential that you possess and the evidence of God's work in you. I will encourage you in the darkness, listen to you, and bear your burdens. I will never give up on you or on us. I promise to spur you on toward love and good deeds, holding you accountable when you do wrong, and helping you to be the man God wants you to be. When you sin against me, I promise to forgive you in my heart, for the Father has rescued us both from the dominion of darkness and has scattered our sins as far as the east is from the west. Thomas, I promise to hold you up in prayer, to not be anxious, but to present my request to God with petition and thanksgiving. I vow to look for the glory of God in his creation with you, to see the work of his hands in the sky, to praise him in the mountains and in the petals of a trillium as you do. I vow to join you in your quest to become a good steward of God's creation to bring shalom in humankind's relationship with the earth. I, Serena, take you, Thomas, to be no other than yourself, loving what I know of you, trusting what I do not yet know, in all our years and through the best and the worst of what is to come. First Corinthians 13 verses four through eight. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Wedding rings are precious and made with precious stone and metal. Let marriage rings be honored by all. These rings are particularly precious because of the diamonds in these rings. They're a gift from Serena's grandmother, her Oma Heyman, who was pleased to have met Thomas before she passed away. And so this is our prayer. We pray by your blessing, O God, that these precious stones and precious rings be to Serena and Thomas symbols of enduring love, honor, and faithfulness, reminding them of the covenant they are making today. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And Thomas, we'll start with you. Serena, I give you this ring. Serena, I give you this ring. As a symbol of my vows. As a symbol of my vows. And of my promise to honor you. 
And with my promise to honor you. Comfort you. Comfort you. And to be faithful to you and to our marriage. And be faithful to you and to our marriage. Thomas, I give you this ring. Thomas, I give you this ring. As a symbol of my vows. As a symbol of my vows. And of my promise to honor you. And of my promise to honor you. Comfort you. Comfort you. And be faithful to you. And be faithful to you. And to our marriage. And to our marriage. Together we pray in the way our Savior has taught us. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, Loving God in the womb. According to the laws of the State of Oregon and the ordinances of the Church of Christ, I now pronounce you husband and wife. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one put asunder. I would like to introduce to you Thomas and Serena Fultis. All the things you love, all the things that may hurt you, all the things you shouldn't do, all the things you want to. They're calling you. Travel safely. They're calling you. Travel safely. Every first kiss, every crisis, every heartbreak, and every act of kindness. They're calling you. Travel safely. They're calling you. Travel safely. Every empire, every monument, every masterpiece, every invention. They're calling you. Travel safely. They're calling you. Travel safely. All the things you love, all the things that may hurt you, all the things you shouldn't do, and all the things you want to. They're calling you. Travel safely.